In the last section, we got a quick review of the Lodash library. The most important part of that section was understanding how this chain function works. It essentially allows us to call a variety of different Lodash methods on a single value and essentially perform a calculation pipeline of sorts. We're going to use this chain method as the key to very concisely solving this k nearest neighbor algorithm. And like I said, we're going to be using Lodash throughout this course to help us do a large variety of different calculations. So with all that in mind, let's now delete all this code. And we're going to write out our k nearest neighbor algorithm directly inside this editor so we can see some very quick output over here. As soon as we finish up this initial implementation, we're then going to move it over to our code editor for the actual Plinko project. All right, so let's get to it. The first thing I'm going to do is put together a little bit of fake dummy data up here that we can work around with. So I'm going to make a array up here at the top called outputs. I'm calling it outputs because remember, that's what we had called our outputs array over here inside of our real project. And then inside of here, I'll put a couple of fake data records. Remember that the ball dropping, or the kind of the ball data recording that we're doing has the drop position, and then the ball bounciness, then the ball size, and then the bucket that it fell into. So I'm gonna do three other entries here. We'll say a 200 pixel drop position, 0.5, 16, we'll say bucket four, maybe 350.5, 16, and four. And then we'll do one more 600 pixels, 0.5, 16, and five, like so. All right, so if this structure right here looks kind of strange, remember all we're doing there is using that same style of array of arrays for storing our data that we had mentioned previously. So each of those different inner arrays represents a different ball drop, First element is position, last one is our bucket. Okay, so let's now start to write out all the different steps for solving our k nearest neighbor algorithm. Now I took every stage along this diagram right here that we just went over, and I kind of put it together in diagram format so that we can really understand the different Lodash functions that we're going to make use of. So the first step of k nearest neighbor is to say that for each observation, we want to subtract our drop point value from 300 pixels, and then take the absolute value of that. So in other words, we're going to take our data array, which you'll see I replicated right here, and we're going to pass it into Lodash's map function. And then the end result of that is going to be an array of arrays with just our distance as the first element in there, and then the bucket that it fell into as the second element. You'll notice that I completely dropped off the ball bounciness and the ball size because as we had said previously, right now we're just concerned about doing this analysis with one variable and we're not going to consider the bounciness or the ball size just yet. Okay, so back inside of my editor over here, I'm going to start off my dot chain and I'll pass in outputs. I'll then map over that and for every row inside of here, I want to return another array that has first the distance to 300 pixels as the first element and then the bucket as the second element. Now if I just put all the code for getting that distance directly into this map function right here it might look just a little bit dirty. So I've got a good idea. Let's make a separate little helper function called distance and this will return the distance from some point to whatever our prediction point is which for us is like 300 pixels. So I'll say math.abs is going to be our point minus the prediction point. And then I'm also going to make a new temporary variable up here called prediction point, and I'll set it equal to 300 pixels like so. All right, so now the first stage of our map function right here, I'm going to return an array. The first element is going to be our distance function that takes our row at zero, and the second element will be our row at three, like so. Now it looks like I made a little typo somewhere in here. Uh, where did I do that? Distance row, oh, excuse me, right there, there we go. All right, so I know that this step or that we just went through looks a little bit confusing, but if you walk through it step by step, I think you'll get a really good idea of what's going on. So all we did here was we set up our chain, we called map on our outputs, and we tried to get out the distance for that first element in there to 300 pixels. And the second element is our bucket number. So the output of this step right here is what you see up here on the top right hand side. 
And if I look back at my diagram, it definitely looks like what I expected. First element is the distance to 300 pixels, and the second is the bucket that the ball landed in. Okay, so now that we got that done, let's move on to our next step. So the next step is to sort our results from least to greatest using the first element inside of each of those inner arrays. And so you'll recall that in the last section, we just spoke about that sort by method. So we can use sort by, that's a part of Lodash, to very quickly sort this entire array of arrays from least to greatest. So back over in my code editor, underneath the map, I'll chain on a sort by, and I'll say that the sorting criteria that I want to use is the zero entry in my row array. So now I can see that everything is correctly sorted. I have 50, 100, 290, and 300. Now the next step is to look at the top k records. Remember, k is a positive integer. So it's going to be the number of top records that we want to consider for saying, OK, well, this new prediction that we're trying to make is going to be very similar to these top k records. To pull out these top k records, we're going to use the Lodash slice method. Slice just takes some number of elements out of an array and returns just those elements. So let's add on the slice right now as well. So I'll add on a dot slice. And I want to take everything from the first record up to, how about like the first three records, like so. Now you'll notice I hard-coded three right here, but k is supposed to be a variable. So just to make sure that this is easy to change in the future, I'm going to create a new variable up here and call it k, and then reference that down there. So now if I ever want to change the number of records that I'm considering for my prediction, I could very easily just change k right here, as opposed to finding it inside of my chain. Now you'll notice that we only have three entries at this point in time. So these are the three most similar records to the point that we're trying to predict of the 300 pixel point. Now this section is getting a little bit long, so let's take a quick pause right here and continue in the next section.